Hey kids, it's Mr. Scott back in the playroom. Um, I wanted to show you some of my fish today. Actually, just one of my fish today. Um, this is Killy, right up here at the top, looking right at my finger. He is a killer fish, and he's all got all sorts of bright, pretty colors on him. And he's one of our newer fish. We haven't had him for too long, but he lives here in Globetown with the rest of the fish. So. Um, he is a very special kind of a fish. For one thing, he's a really good jumper, which means I have to keep the lid on tight or he'll be out here on the floor. One time that happened, I was feeding him and he jumped and hit me right in the chest and fell on the floor, got cat hair all over him and everything. It was terrible. But we, I got him cleaned off and got him back in the tank and he's been fine ever since. So, But I'm going to tell you some stuff about killer fish, though. About First, about how he gets his name. Kill a fish, the part of the fish, the part of the name kill is a Dutch word and it means little stream. And they call him that a kill a fish because that's where you find them. You find them in streams and lakes. And you can find them all over the world too. Everywhere from South America, up in North America, and in Canada. You can also find them in Africa and far over east into Asia as far as Vietnam. So, but yes, and he's a really active guy. He likes to swim around, and he, if you, if you have smaller fish in the tank, he likes to nip at them. And that is because he is what is called a carnivore. He likes to eat meat. He likes to eat other fish, and he likes to eat things like itty bitty shrimp called brine shrimp. And I have one of those to give to him right now. So if you'll come up here on the top of the tank, we'll open the lid, and there he is, right up at the top of the water. Now he likes to play with me. When I put my finger in the tank, he'll spin around and look at me, and he'll nip at my finger. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh. Now the good thing is, is it kind of tickles, because Killy doesn't have any teeth. So he just likes to kind of nip at my finger like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a shrimp. I have things I buy at the fish store. You know, look in my hand right here called brine shrimp. And it's dried, but it's it's like a, him, a piece of meat for him, which is what he likes to eat. And he gets really excited when I have one of these to give to him. See, so look at him. He's already looking at me. He knows what I have. I'm going to put it down here, and he's going to take it right out of my hand, I hope. Oh! He got it. He chewed it up. Swallowed it. Chew, 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 chew. Isn't he such a pretty fish? He's got orange and yellow and almost kind of pinkish colors. And that's about how big he'll get, too. That's about the size of him. The killifish get anywhere from about two to four inches long. And so he's probably just about full grown. He's a good two inches long depends on what kind of killifish you have. There's thousands of different kinds of killifish. There's more than 2,000 different kinds. So, um, I just wanted you to meet Killy. I thought that would be a pretty cool science-y thing to learn today about what he is and where he's from and what he likes to eat and stuff like that. I better close the lid or he might come out and join us. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Once is enough for that. I'll put the lid on there nice and tight and he can't get out and let's go to the back porch and see what's happening all right we made it out onto the back porch here it's a nice sunny afternoon and i have one more thing i'd like to tell you about the killer fish do you see this picture right here it's out in a place called nevada that's a state that's way out west and it's close to a, a state called California that you've probably heard of. It's right next door to it. But in, in Nevada, they have a lot of desert area. Lots of sand and rock and dirt. And there's, there's not much there in, in a lot of it. But this is a place in Nevada. And it's got kind of a funny name. It's called the Devil's Hole. And if you look really close down at the bottom of the Devil's Hole here, you have cliffs all around. And then you have water down at the bottom. There's a lake down there. 
and in the in that lake are fish and believe it or not there are killer fish that live there and it's an endangered species of killer fish there's not many of them left this is the only place that you can find them and they're called blue pup fish and they look just like killy that we saw inside except for they're blue and they have some slightly smaller fins killy has those big wavy fins and these little blue pupfish that live in here only have small little kind of round fins on them. So, but this is where they live. They live in the Devil's Hole here in Nevada. And now this is a very deep hole. It's, if you're standing up on the side of it where the person with this camera is, it's 300 feet down to the water. That's the length of a whole football field. You would fall for a whole football field into the water. That's a long, long, long way, and Mr. Scott would not be doing it. So, uh, but this is where the blue pup fish live. It's the only place in the world where they live, and they're actually on the endangered species list. list. So it, you can't go down there and catch them. You can't put them in your fish tank like I have Killy in there. They have to stay out in the wild like this. It would be against the law to own one of those in your house. So I just thought that was really interesting. I thought it would be something you'd like to know. So that's the Devil's Hole in Nevada, is where they live. So, I have some poems here about fish, or one about a fish, and one about a different kind of animal that I would share with, want to share with you. This book is called Who Swallowed Harold? And it says, and other poems about pets. So it's a very, very, very silly book. And it's... Um, written by Susan Pearson, she's the author, and David Slonim is the illustrator, which means he drew the pictures. Now, if you look on this front picture here, looks like something bad's about to happen. That's Harold, right there, and looks like somebody's about to swallow him. Let's see, I've got the poem right here. Who swallowed Harold? My brother swallowed Harold. He did it on a dare. I looked into the fishbowl and Harold wasn't there. I can't believe he'd do it. But my little sister Sue saw him in the act and swears that it's true. My brother says he's sorry for playing such a trick. I bet he's only sorry because Harold made him sick. <laughs> and we have a visitor here on the table. Wally has come to see what we're doing. This is one of our other kitties, and he, we rescued him from a shelter. He and his brother, Mo, we'll show you Mo another time, but sometimes when you read, Wally thinks you should be paying attention to him instead of the book. So, <laughs> he's come to his attention. But I thought this was a funny poem, Who Swallowed Harold? And uh, it's just kind of silly. Yes, yes, Wally, we love you too. <laughs> so I have one more uh, poem to share with you. Now, this is a pet that Mr. Scott has never had. I had a creek in my backyard when I was a little boy, and I used to see these all the time out in the creek. Can you tell what it is? It's a turtle. He's got goggles on. He's swimming. And if you look at it, what does it look like he's swimming in? It says he's actually swimming in the toilet, which is kind of gross. But it's kind of funny, too. So... Let's find out about why this turtle is in the toilet. That's the name of the poem. My turtle's in the toilet. My turtle's in the toilet. How he got there, I can't think. Did he climb up through the pipes or jump down from the sink? Did someone drop him in there to play a joke on me? How he landed in the toilet is a mystery. He's looking very cheerful, swimming around about, and not in any rush. For me to get him out, please don't flush. Oh, that would be terrible if he got flushed. So, there's a couple of poems about some pets we can have that live in the water. So, now, the last thing that I'd like to do is sing a song with you. Here's my guitar. And this is one of my favorite songs, and it's one of my favorite songs that my kids like to sing in the classroom at school. And Wally, you are a, 
There's Wally. <laughs> He, want, he wants to hog the camera. Okay, he's going to lay down now, so we're okay. So, the name of this song is, is Down by the Meadow. And it's a song about fish who live in a pond and who run away from their mother. And their mother has to figure out how to get them back. So, you ready? Down by the meadow in the itty bitty pool swam a big mama fish and her baby fish too. Swim little fish, he swam as fast as he can. And he swam and he swam right over the dam. Poop dot diddle dot then flop flee. Doot dot diddle dot then flop flee. Doot dot diddle dot then flop flee. And he swam and he swam right over the dam. Two little fishies in the itty bitty pool swam a big baby fish too. Swim little fish, he swam as fast as you can. And he swam, and he swam right over the dam. Do dot, diddle dot, then flop flee. Do dot, diddle dot, then flop flee. Do dot, diddle dot, then flop flee. And he swam, and he swam right over the dam. One little fish in the itty bitty pool swam a big mama fish and her baby fish too. songs in my classroom the kids all like to really sing that one loud so I'm glad you stopped by to see me today I um, hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed meeting Killy and meeting Wally I think Wally's gonna be showing up a lot more from the looks of things so but um, I hope everybody's staying safe and sound and I will see you next time out here on the back porch see you soon bye